Hello and welcome to News Update on Enterprise TV. I'm Chinyere Igweodu. No fewer than 23 persons have been killed during an attack by terrorists at Angua Danko in Kakanji, ward of Biniguari, local government area of Kaduna State. The police spokesperson in Kaduna, Mansur Hassan, is yet to comment on the matter, but Premium Times is citing a security report alerting officials about heightened criminal abduction in the area. The report indicated that the terrorists abducted an unspecified number of people during the attack. Residents and officials said an unspecified number of residents were also either kidnapped or could not be accounted for. The lawmaker who represents the area in the State House of Assembly, Yaya Musa, on Thursday said 23 people were killed and five others injured in the attack. He said 19 of the deceased were from Angua Danku, while four were killed at Kanawa Village. Attacks by terrorists are frequent in the Biningwari area and some parts of Kaduna State, despite the presence of multiple security formations in the state. Meanwhile, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Fagwemi, has asked Iyaya Bello, the former governor of Kogi State, to turn himself in to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. He said in a statement on Thursday that the EFCC had statutory powers to invite any person of interest to interact with them in the course of their investigation into any matter, regardless of status. Bello, who faced 80 billion naira laundering charges, refused to appear before the Federal High Court in Abuja on Thursday, where he was expected to take his plea. Earlier on Wednesday, EFCC operatives laid siege to Bello's residence in Wuse Zone 4, Abuja, for several hours in a bid to arrest him. The operatives were unable to carry out the court ordered arrest as a result of the stiff resistance they faced from the police personnel guarding the house. The incumbent governor of Kogi State, Osman Ododo, later showed at the house during the police EFCC standoff. He was believed to have later departed the residence in his official vehicle with Bello. Bello failed to appear in court for his scheduled arraignment in court on Thursday, although his lawyers were present. Away from that, the National Executive Committee, NEC, of the People Democratic Party has asked Umar Damagun to continue as the acting national chairman of the party pending the election of a new chairman in August. The chairman of the PDP Governors Forum, Governor Bala Mohamed of Bochi State, said this when he briefed journalists shortly after the 98th NEC meeting of the party on Thursday in Abuja. Mohamed added that the successful conduct of the party's NEC meeting was an indication that there was no dissension and rancor within the leadership. Also speaking, Damago said that the leadership of the party was not a do or die affair. Ologun Agba said the NEC advised uh, President Bola Tunubu to convene a special National Security Council meeting to proffer a holistic solution to the current security challenges facing the country. He said the NEC also urged Mr. Tunubu to rejig his economic team to include individuals with proven integrity and competence to assist in repositioning the economy. The meeting was attended by former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, the Minister of Federal Capital Territory, Nyesa Wiki, NWC members, BOT members, serving governors, and members of the National Assembly. The National Bureau of Statistics, MBS, says about 50.5% of Nigerian children aged between 5 and 17 are engaged in economic activities. The Bureau revealed this in its report titled Nigeria Child Labor and Forced Labor Survey 2022, released on Thursday. It described child labor as work for which children are either too young or that may be physically or psychologically injurious to their health and well-being. The report added that 39.2% of children representing nearly 23 million were in child labor and 22.9% representing more than 14 million children are involved in hazardous work. According to the report, the Northwest Geopolitical Zone had the highest number of children in child labor, with nearly 6.5 million, and those in hazardous work at more than 3 million. And to some foreign stories now, Israel has carried out a missile strike against Iran. Blasts were heard in the central province of Isfahan in an apparent retaliation to an Iranian attack against Israel on Saturday night. Iranian media have not reported any direct impact from Friday's Israel attack and global nuclear watchdog and the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, has said no nuclear sites were damaged 
Iran's Fars News Agency reported that three drones had been destroyed and explosions heard in Isfahan. There has been no official Israeli comment, but the strike appeared to be a limited one. It coincided with the 84th birthday of Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Isfahan province is home to a large air base, a major missile production complex, and several nuclear facilities. Iran fired more than 300 drones and missiles in its first ever direct attack on Israel, bringing a years-long shadow war between them into the open. The airbase in Isfahan has long been home to Iran's fleet of American-made F-14 Tomcat fighter jets bought before the 1979 Islamic Revolution. Iranian state media television has said its nuclear facilities near the city are fully safe. And with that, it's a wrap on the news update this hour. Thank you so much for being a part of it. We want to hear from you as you follow us on all our social media platforms at Enterprise TV 7. Do well to log on to our website at www.enterprisetvnews.com. I'm Chinyere Igwe Oju. Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth.